Now we are shifting our focus to developments from the United States. The United States has refrained from commenting on the reports of its alleged decision to allow the Ukraine to strike deep inside Russia, US, INF long-range missiles, stating that there were no policy updates to speak of. United States State Department uh, spokesperson Matthew Miller reiterated the U.S. policy of supporting Ukraine against Russia but declined to provide the details about reports, suggesting President Joe Biden's decision to authoritize, authorize uh, Ukraine to launch long-range missile into Russian territory. Meanwhile, President Biden's decision to allow Ukraine to fire U.S. made and supplied missiles deeper into Russia, a major policy shift announced over the weekend after months of intense lobbying by Kyiv, has drawn a furious response from Moscow. Let's listen into what Matthew Miller said. In Kursk, engaging in combat operations. Uh, I don't have any policy updates to speak to today. Uh, as you know, since uh, even before Russia launched its full-scale invasion, the uh, United States has marshaled a coalition of more than 50 countries to provide assistance to Ukraine and to hold Russia accountable for its actions. We have made clear that we will always uh, adapt and adjust the capabilities that we provide to uh, Ukraine when it's uh, appropriate to do so. And you have seen us back that up with steps that we have taken over the past several years. Uh, but I don't have any new policy developments to speak to today. Uh, yeah. So again, I, I know this goes without saying, but let me say it anyway. Um, I'm not going to speak to or confirm in, any policy changes. Um, but when you look at escalation of this conflict, it has been Russia that has escalated the conflict time and time again. And that includes just in the recent month when Russia recruited the deployment of more than 11,000 North Korean soldiers who are now on the front lines in Kursk engaging in combat operations against uh, the Ukrainian military. That is a major escalation by Russia, um, bringing in an Asian military to a conflict inside Europe. And as we said, uh, as the secretary said, our response to that would be firm and the supporters of Ukraine's response to that needed to be firm. Um, and we will continue to do what is appropriate to hold Russia accountable for its actions, including its escalatory actions, and to hold North Korea accountable for its escalatory yeah. actions. The While we have just heard uh, Mike Mil Matthew Miller, in fact, uh, saying and refraining to comment uh, on the reports of the alleged United States decision was uh, to allow the Ukraine to strike deep inside Russia using long-range missile. And in fact, we have heard how he stated that uh, there were no policy updates to speak of. Well, to get more updates on this, uh, I have my colleague Brian Thomas. Brian, we have just heard how United States has uh, defended its act of not coming clean on the policy matters of the U.S. policy supporting Ukraine against Russia and declined to provide the details about the report suggesting President Joe Biden's decision to, in fact, allow Ukraine to launch long-range long long missiles into Russian territory. What is the latest that you're tracking over? Uh, well, uh, definitely similar. We just ha heard, uh, you know, Matthew Miller speaking on U.S. behalf that, yes, U.S. Uh, declined to comment on reports suggesting that it had authorized Ukraine to carry out these strikes inside Russia using these very long-range missiles. He even stated that there were no policy updates to speak of and he even reaffirmed Washington's commitment to supporting Ukraine against Russia, but avoided addressing claims about uh, President Joe Biden's alleged, uh, you know, decision to approve such actions as well. Uh, he even says that he does not have any policy updates to speak uh, as of and he emphasizes the long-standing U.S.-led coalition supporting Ukraine and says that even before you, uh, Russia launches full-scale invasion, the U.S. marshaled a coalition of more than 50 countries to provide assistance to Ukraine and hold Russia accountable for its action. Even he also uh, underscored that U.S. is readiness to adapt the aid uh, you know, provided to Ukraine as needed and we have made clear that we will always adopt and adjust the capabilities as they provide Ukraine when it's appropriate. And he even says that U.S. is very demonstrated to their commitment over the past uh, several years, but he says that he does not have, rather U.S. does not have new policy developments to share. 
And this very statement also, uh, you know, Simran comes in response to Russia's condemnation of Biden's uh, alleged decision, which even Moscow described as a major escalation and further evidence of direct U.S. involvement in the conflict as well. Even Dmitry Peskov also, uh, you know, has called the move, uh, uh, you know, qualitatively new round of escalation and a significant step in U.S. engagement as well. Simran. Hmm. All right. Brian, thank you for adding these details. I'll request you to kindly stay on with me on the broadcast while we also get more updates that we're tracking very closely where the United States has clarified to Bangladesh that it does not support the government involvement in the violent crackdowns on the peaceful protest. This statement follows the recent clash between the members of Hindu community and law enforcement forces in Chittagong earlier. India condemned the attacks on Hindu communities, asserting that such actions would only heighten tensions within the community. Let's in fact listen in to the reaction that we are taking at this point. Uh, made clear um, to the government of Bangladesh, as we make clear to countries all the, uh, around the world that we support uh, the right to peaceful protest and that um, in no way should um, any government engage in violent crackdowns on people. All right, viewers. Now, Brian, in fact, we have again heard uh, how U.S. spokesperson uh, Matthew Miller has given these details. Uh, what, in this point of time, as the U.S. has urged and United States, in fact, clarified to Bangladesh that it does not support the government involvement in the violent crackdown on the peaceful protest. Now, in a way, suggesting Bangladesh to and the UNIS government for now curtailing or curtailing the propagandist, in fact, decisions that they have. The statement has followed the recent clash between the members of Hindu community and the law enforcement forces in Chittagong in Bangladesh. Earlier, India as well also condemned the attacks on Hindu communities, asserting that such actions would only heighten the tensions within the community. All right, viewers. Now, in fact, the latest that we are getting in this regard is how you can see the visuals on your screen is that the United States has urged the Bangladesh to end the violent crackdown on the peaceful protest. In the recent clashes between the members of the Hindu community and the law enforcement forces in Bangladesh's port city of Chittagong, which were triggered by a Facebook post criticizing ISKCON. When questioned about the reported crackdowns on the protest and the situation of minorities in Bangladesh, U.S. State Department spokesperson, in fact, made this information clear. All right, viewers, that is all the news of the nation and the world. We'll continue to track all the developments very closely on the other side. Till then, stay with us.